Smile, you on camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here at Whipper Wheel Holler. It's, uh, I don't know, late in the afternoon, sun's trying to go down, and I've been out trying to build a roost for our young chickens, and we're going to move them out to a little bigger pen, and been letting them rascals out in the garden, and they've been really doing good out there catching bugs and raking around the leaves around the fence and then they got to getting in the, the old part of the high tunnel and didn't need them in there in them garden beds and Lori put some netting and stuff around that and that kept them out of that and they're just getting more and more mischievous every day that they are I turned, getting... them, I turned them out today and I had to run them out of the raised beds three times they're like little kids. You yep. give them an inch and they're going to take a mile. I do love going out there in the afternoon working in the garden and letting them babies out and them just mess around behind me in the garden, but they can't stay in there forever. You got one that likes to stay around, you know. Yeah. You? So, yeah. They were doing good, but they're just getting, they get, ain't staying out of stuff, so I run them out of there, so I'm going to try to put them in a different pen. That may be fun after a while. May end up letting them go to old roost and catching them, putting them in there. <laughs> Y'all notice that I've got a big smile on my face, don't you? <laughs> I'm happy she is. <laughs> yep. Tomorrow, well, time I get this video, but Friday is your last day tomorrow. By the time y'all get this video, I'm going to be done. I'm re go I'm retired. I'm done, and uh, our next journey begins. Yeah, and I'm excited. <laughs> I really am. I've been I've been telling her you only got one more Monday. You only got one more Friday. She's been them days been long for her, but they have. They've been really long, but uh, it's sad too. Mm -hmm. She's gonna miss all them babies up there. It. Uh, I think it really hit me today pretty hard too. Now there wasn't very many kids at school today because tomorrow's the last day, and they kind of start dwindling down. But yeah. Um, some when you've done something for so many years and you remember that feeling when you walked out of that bus garage for the last time you remember <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it uh when you've done somebody something that many years um you feel like you're going to be out of place almost all i can ever remember <laughs> since i was knee high to grasshopper was working so now it's not that we're gonna not be working. We got so much to do around here on this homestead. It's I don't know how we'll ever. Everybody stay tells us. It. Everybody says you, you don't know how you're gonna get everything done. Well, <laughs> maybe so, but we're not yeah. gonna work at it as hard. We're gonna. I, I get up. I like to get up early and get out and work till noon anyway. <laughs> if I got something to do, mow yard or work in the garden, we just get to do it on our own time. We don't have to be rush rush. That old alarm clock don't have to go off. It is it is very bittersweet, though, because like a lot of y'all, me and Mr. Brown have worked many and many and many years, many, many hours, probably him more than me, but being a mother and raising a big family, yeah, it took lots of hours plus working, and uh, it, it's time, it's time. I work, ever since I can remember, because... When I wasn't big enough to see over the steering wheel, I was driving the truck in the hay field. I had to get my knees up in the seat and drive, and whenever they didn't want me to stop, I'd have to jump down and slide down in the floorboard and put my <laughs> foot on the clutch and the brake. And of course, the fields wasn't, most of the time they were flat. It wasn't no big deal, but ever since I can remember. And when I was 11 year old, I believe it was 11 or 12, I started custom cutting hay. Me and my grandpa, my dad was down his back and had back surgery, and that was before laser surgery, and it was a pretty major deal, and uh, he was off work for about a year. And uh, he put me and his dad, my grandpa, to work. Uh, we had a little tractor, and, and it wasn't much, but it was a little John Deere tractor, and bought a Ford mowing machine, and he put me and grandpa out there, and I rode that little old tractor Grandpa would lay off the land for me. I wasn't big enough to pick up a sickle bar on the mower machine, and he'd help me do all that, and we'd move from field to field, and he'd lay it off, and if, I'd got, if I got to really looking hot and he felt sorry for me, he'd <laughs> come out there and let me go sit in the shade for a little while and get a drink, but 
we just helped support the family then. That's what people done back then. Didn't matter how old <laughs> you was. You went to work in the fields to help feed your family, that's for sure. Now, I don't think I started working that young, but I was raising the, I was cooking and, and being a mama, not for my own kids, but for my own brother. Oh, yeah, right after we was married, and you know, for your brother, right? <laughs> so I had to grow up pretty fast. But see, too. when you moved up here and you was 13, you went right to work with your grandpa on a farm, so. Yeah, that I enjoyed that, though. I really did. We. Um, He's a funny man. That was, that was a perfect place to grow up, I can tell you. So on the farm, and that's where we raised our kids too. Was on the same farm, on the same creek <laughs> that I swam in and took many a bass in. And my kids will tell you that uh, they I had. I think a... we spent after we got married about. Well, we was after we moved up there. It was probably we spent about twenty four years there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we ended up when we sold that place, the the farm. Uh, where we raised the kids, we had uh, we had bought just a little bit of land on the river. We built uh, the Mennonites built us a, a cabin right there, and we lived there for just a little over Two three and, three yeah, years. It was almost three years. Yeah, and uh, so that's when our venture really began, trying to find another homestead. It took us a little while. I but got off. I got off the. I drove a big truck for seventeen years, owner operator, for about fifteen years of that. And uh, I got off the road, and went back to work at the sawmill, and. Uh, and we need, let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. When we got married, you was working at Brown Shoe. Brown Shoe Company. Okay. Um, in Pocahontas, Arkansas, from Brown Shoe Company. Of course, you had two or three jobs at the whole time. When well, you was working at the factory, you still worked on... You daylight helped, till 10 o'clock every you, night. You worked on a farm for a man that we've always known all of our life. He That's also... To pay rent. <laughs> he also trapped in the wintertime to make money to get us through the winter. Um, we cut wood to make money. Okay, but after Brown Shoe... We're going to reminisce. Most, a lot of people know this, but we have a lot of new subscribers, so we're just going to kind of go over it again. We're, we're Maybe we won't get, bore you too much. <laughs> we're going to get to where we finally retire. So after Brown Shoe, you went... Where'd you go? I went to work up on the cattle ranch. Okay. Worked on the cattle ranch, a big cattle ranch, about 450 mama cows for... A few years we lived up there on the ranch in a house we did we lived on the house that they uh they had a house you could live in you and your family while he worked on the ranch and uh, we had brandon our oldest boy he's 42 now and then during that time there's a little time there you worked at the library in pocahontas uh -huh. and then you went to the night shift i'd work during the day come in and watch the little ones and she'd go to night shift and work yeah, I got pregnant with my oldest daughter, and I went to work at the shoe factory while he was working on the cattle ranch. I worked nights, and... Uh, From, like, what was it, 3 to midnight or something? Yes. 4 to midnight, whatever <laughs> And it was. then I'd get up with the kids. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know how I'd done it, y'all, but I did. Um, but uh, I couldn't do it now, that's for sure. So, brown shoe, cattle ranch... <clears throat> Yeah. From the cattle ranch, did you go to work at tow boats? I went to work on the Mississippi River. And I worked for a company for almost two years called Agatrans. And I've got kin folks that was working for them. Um, I got a cousin that uh, we just went out west with, and he was a riverboat captain. He just retired uh, about a year or so ago. He still trips some. On the mighty Mississippi River, I run mainly from St. Louis, Missouri to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And uh, that's a different life. Started out three weeks at a time and then a month at a time. And uh, But it was better money than you could make around here. Yeah, the men, you know, the men worked hard around here. But like we have said a hundred times, you just could not make the money that you needed to make to be able to raise a family. So most men, just like your daddy. We done that a lot though. Had to go <laughs> off and work so mama could stay home and raise the kids. Yeah, then mom ended up working off and on just like you did. She <laughs> yeah. worked in a nursing home and different things. 
And I guess me, for me, after brown shoe, um, I come home for just a little bit, and then I ended up, that's when I started working up at school at Oak Ridge Central. We are out to farm when you started working there. Started mm -hmm. driving a bus. I mean, you started doing subbing and this, that, and other, then you started driving a mm -hmm. school bus. So from that point, um, let's say from, from the boat, and then after you hurt your back. Oh, yeah. I, I was about two years, and then I decided to go back out, and I went to a different company for about a year, and I hurt my back really bad. And uh, I was off work almost a year, wasn't I? Yeah, and we had a, we had a brand new baby. She wasn't too old. Too. That was tough times. And I wasn't working because I was at home nursing that baby and taking care of two more kids. And uh, you talk about rough times, but I'm telling you, we made it. I sure did. We made it. We didn't have nothing. That's one of them times <laughs> we went out and killed a chicken for supper, wasn't it? Yeah, we didn't have nothing. And we struggled, but we <laughs> made it. Um, with the help of his grandma and his mama, they kept, you know. We'd get to go to their garden and stuff so when she raised a garden. We done fine. Um, from that point, um, is that when, no, you didn't start driving truck till after, um, we went in the store business. Oh, I forgot about the store business. Yeah. Woo. My uncle and aunt and another uncle and many, many families up in that area ran, um, the Dalton store, which is now known as the Mennonite store, and y'all have seen us do a video going in there and talking about that store at Dalton, Arkansas. Well, we run it for about three years, um, and I had four little ones. I and had, I was working two jobs. He was working for the county. Plus working at the store. Plus working at the store. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I would go up there. He would open the store up. I'd go up there, and the, the three that... Uh, went to school and Allie was in preschool they would catch the bus at the store and then I had little Tyler on my hip and uh, most of the time he was with me there at the store when I was Tried running that store playroom back there so uh, many of people that would come in that store every day knew my kids and uh, I was working I doing the store, going there early, and we had wood stove, and I'd build a fire and get all that going and get it going until she got there. Then I'd go to work, uh, drive about 30 miles into Pocahontas, and I worked for the county road uh, crew. And I also worked at the uh, transfer station for them at a time, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I worked yeah. for them a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And then I was, while I was... Down with my back, I went to taxidermy school. I always thought I'd want to do, you know, be an artist. <laughs> thought I would uh, do taxidermy, and I did for a while. He did a good job, too. Uh, I won some ribbons uh, in state competitions and uh, different things like that. But I found out that I didn't uh, decide I just didn't want to do that the rest of my life. <laughs> So, uh, after that, what did I do? Um, hang on a minute. At the store you went back to work, I think for Mackie at Sawmill for a while, did you not? No, I think that's no. when I started driving a truck. Okay. For oh, hour. yeah, because I was working for the county. I went back to the county, and I was working at what they call a transfer station. So I can't even remember it's been so many. I'm working at a transfer station where they hauled in the city trash and the county trash, and we compacted them on trailers and they'd haul them to a landfill. And I was managing that. I was taking care of that by myself there for a long time. And got to know a guy there that was driving a truck there that that was... Uh, Herb. Herb Kemper. He's passed away now. But Good man. He started me... I uh, wonder if I want to drive a truck for him. And I thought, well, I might, and we talked about it, and of course he hyped it up, and he, <laughs> he owned a couple, two trucks, plus the one he was driving uh, to, the, to the landfill, and they were over-the-road trucks, and he put me in a truck and sent me out, and uh, his wife, I, uh, Thelma, the good people, and uh, 
got me driving the truck. Well, next thing, old Herb wanted to sell me a truck. So he sold me my first truck, and I drove it for a few years and, and went leased it to a company and uh, ended up buying a, a nicer truck. And uh, anyway, I, I done that owner operator for about 15 years. And it was good for us. I mean, she could stay home. Uh, it wasn't a tremendous amount of money, but for the area, it was pretty good money. And she could stay with the kids and, and while well, she was working at school. But Well, um, there at the beginning, though, I was just working, uh, driving a school bus. So that was part time. And I was cleaning houses in between. So with me having them kind of jobs, I could take care of my kids. I could take them to school and I could pick them up and, and be home with them in the afternoon. And so that was a very, that's what I wanted. I didn't want a full-time job that would keep my kids, you know, at a babysitter all the time and not mama not being home. So I done the that. The kids tell us to this day, they remember when, the years <laughs> I was driving the truck because the groceries, they got they got more snacks <laughs> and they got a little more junk food and, well, and they got to go out and eat. Now, more. I'm just, I'm going to be honest here because, and a lot of people can relate to this. When me and Danny got married, we didn't have any money. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> I had okay. I spent a hundred and fifty dollars on our wedding rings, and that was sawmill earned dollars. <laughs> but one hundred and fifty for both sets. <laughs> but what I'm getting at here, I think we had forty-two dollars in the bank whenever we got married. If we was lucky. Yeah. If we was lucky. <laughs> and um, but we never had any any money to put back for. Uh, for our retirement, for anything, for a rainy day, if if we had needed tires or a refrigerator it was went always out, hard. I had, oh, I'd it, always have to do something extra to it, try to make uh, the pay of the electric bill. Yeah, and there was many it. a times that he even had to sell something because something maybe went out and we had just had to have it. And uh, I mean, we never had no money, and that's just now when he started driving the truck. <laughs> We were a lot, rich. No. A lot of people would not think that it was a lot of money, but to us, it was a lot of money. And um, it was... Um, I'd gross 120 to 140,000 a year, gross money. But y'all had to understand there's overhead money in that. You're, it was bring home after taxes about 50 to 60,000. That's what it was. And, you know, so here we are. Never seen this kind of money before. And I'm, I'm sticking all this money back. Oh, I had, you know, a good, a good pile of it in savings, you I'll know. I'll tell you exactly how much was in there. And <laughs> I got I'm going to tell you exactly how much was in there. It was almost $10,000. So, you know, besides making the truck, the big truck payments, which was $1,000. Insurance. You know, insurance, overhead, uh, and you spent. Expenses. How much money on fuel every week? A lot. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, you didn't get all that money. Oh, no. But no. still. We were just, I mean, if we wanted to do something for the farm or the house, you know, it just comes so much easier. Plus, I was sticking money back. Now, y'all, I'm, I'm a pretty wise person, but <laughs> I, just, I just wasn't thinking about, and I even was. in the store business, we paid taxes. We paid them every month and every quarterly. So, I had all this money saved up, and everything and i thought my taxes were going to be about six grand and we thought. had a lot of expenses to take off now that's back when you could take even a clothes hanger off <laughs> and um we ended up having to all that 10 grand all gone. that 10 grand <laughs> to pay in all, them all taxes. that money gone and, and, and to give it to and old I uncle learned, sam <laughs> i learned my lesson real big there uh, that I wasn't paying enough in taxes but i'd never we'd never had that kind of money but even after that um at least we had it. Yeah, and uh, I didn't have to go to jail or nothing. No, we had it. That's for sure. I'd put it back, and we paid it. But uh, yeah, all that money went. But still, we were doing really good. Now we had to sacrifice with Danny being gone, and we uh, missed a lot. We ended up being able to. We used to raise registered Longhorn cattle. A lot of people don't know that about us. And we raised uh, longhorns that weren't registered too. Yeah, we had. Yeah. We had, we had both. We had some cross. So I crossed longhorns and beef. We had um, we had we a bunch of horses. I mean, we had everything. Mules. We we raised <laughs> everything that you can think of. 
goats, we sheep, We were very busy hogs. people, <laughs> and my children were too. So when he was gone, it was me and the four kids that were responsible for our, our daily life, plus taking care of the farm and the cattle and everything that goes with it. But Danny knew that when he was gone, that everything would be taken care of because our children were raised to be very responsible and to help their mother and, and never complain, never complain. So Danny did. He worked on the road for 15 years. And uh, when our kids grew up, and the last one, well, he, he did. He, he went with us to the river and we sold the farm. We built a cabin on the river. And uh, he did graduate and was living there. But he did get married. I always told her, I said, if we get that last one out of school, I'm quitting this truck. And, and he did. <laughs> he did. And that's when he went to work for the school system. Because I was already there by then. I had already went to Sloan Hendricks and, and started my started there and I started when I started at Sloan Hendricks I was a teacher's aide and um, I really loved it because I'd done that at the school at Oak Ridge where my kids went I had already been doing that for a while where I graduated from so uh, when we went to this other school my other three my, my kids went there too but uh, that's when I started working there so Danny comes over there so that's how we both ended up working in the school system first what happened there's some there's too many years <laughs> <clears throat> the guy that i saw milled for when i was younger been bugging me for years to come yeah. back and drive a truck for him and uh, the lumber truck to haul off the the lumber they sold and uh, i told him i said if i sell my big truck i get my big truck sold i said i'm gonna be hollering at you and, and i did and i he put me to work well, it wasn't about a few years after that that uh, the the sawmill business wasn't all that good, and the the uh, workman's comp insurance they were killing him with the money that he owed, and then he was having neck problems. He'd sit there and watch that saw work that neck back and forth for many many years, ever since he was a young boy, and uh, he was uh, one of the best sawyers I've ever been around. But so. He kind of let us know that things, you know, we're going. He's going to start. He's going to shut down. So I started looking for another job, and there was a custodian job come up where she was working, and I applied for it and I didn't get it. You believe that? <laughs> I applied for it and I didn't get it. You so were overqualified. I was overqualified, and they hired somebody else. Well, mm -hmm. he decided he didn't like it. So just before they hired him, I guess right after school was out, and he stayed there that summer. And they hired me in August of that year before school started. And I went to work. So I done custodian and drove a bus for a year. Well, I was there a year and the garage mechanic, the transportation guy, was going to retire. And they hit me up to take the job. And I thought about it and there's a little more money and everything. And so I spent 16, almost 16 years doing that, transportation director. Now, by that time, mechanic, I was in the kitchen. Slash bus driver. <laughs> by that time, I was in the kitchen. Because at the other school, I had subbed in that kitchen. So when I went to this other school, that's when they hired me full-time as a cook in the cafeteria. And then you went full-time custodian for a while. Well, I was even doing that. I was doing that and working in the kitchen for a while. This work. That's all we done. I would work, work all work. day in the kitchen, then I would go over there and work a couple hours but you know, in custodial. I'm so glad the good Lord gave us a job, ain't you? I am. I'm not complaining. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, but I can tell you, we it, we have blood, sweat, and tears uh -huh. of many years of working so hard to get to this point, y'all. So many people our age have. And... Um, I don't know about the younger generation right now, but I know we did. <laughs> it's almost like, I, I can't believe it, it's almost like I've only got, for sure, it's going to be done by the time y'all get this video, but I've got half a day tomorrow, which will be Friday, and I've only got half a day, school will be out, and I'm done. I'm retired. I will never, I, will, I won't have to go back unless something drastic happens that I have to. 
Um, well, we never know what tomorrow's going to bring, but we don't plan on it. No, our teacher retirement is going to help take care of us, and I'll be able to draw some Social Security in a few years. He's already drawing teacher retirement and Social Security. We, uh, we worked hard to get our bills paid. We, d we don't owe a mortgage. Um, we drive vehicles that are paid for. We don't drive high dollar vehicles. Um, we just, we got our ducks in a row and said we're gonna retire at a certain time and we want to be. Mosquitoes are, mosquitoes yeah, are. are gnats are after us. We want to be, um, we don't want to have to worry about we'll it. We want to be free. Free. Um, and, you know, it is. I can breathe. I really can breathe. And it seems like ever since I was a young girl and we got married, it's like we've held our breath for 40-something <laughs> years. Long held time. our breath. Long time. And what I mean by that is just trying to make it. And we shouldn't have ever really been afraid or worried because good Lord has took care of us. We may not have had any money and we may have struggled so bad we wondered what we was going to do for sure. But he tells us, I'd you know, always find, with the Lord's help, I always found a way to make a little, make a dollar. And we always had food on the table. I never worried about that. Never. I promise you, my kids didn't go hungry. No. Never. <laughs> now, they'll tell you they won't never eat a, another fried squirrel. Or, <laughs> I think they're even getting tired of deer meat by now. But uh, when we you. Ate a lot of, we ate a lot of wild game. When you live up in the hills, um, it's a place that you learn to survive because you have that. You have that opportunity when you live out in a place like this. That's all I ever knew. And that's pretty much what we're doing now, too. And we don't worry. Don't worry about it. We don't worry about it. I got beans it's in just there. A, and it's just a relief to not have that responsibility for that alarm clock to go off. I wouldn't hardly miss a day of work. No, he never. He'd be dog sick and not miss a day of work. <laughs> we had to tell him when he got COVID... You're too sick. You have to go home. He got tested, and they you know, they said you're going home. But uh, you know, I only, I only missed about five work days over that time. I know. But it took me two months. I was, woo, I was down he was and very out. Sick. I was down and out for two months. Had no energy. But uh, and that is about to drive me crazy. But anyways, what we wanted to get on here, we just there's a lot of y'all that are new to our channel, so we wanted to back up a little bit. You know, before we really tell you how excited this time is, this moment of us both being retired. And now he got to retire before I did. I retired in December. Because he's, older. December. he's older than me. Yeah. Well, I done told my boss, man, about six or eight months before that. I said, man, I'm going to be 62 in October and I'll stay with you till December 31st. And I give him fair warning. He'll, <laughs> he'll tell you, too. He tried to get me not to go several times. But like he told me yesterday, he said, man, you got a big... We went to a, a retirement party. We had one yesterday. Yeah, they've seen pictures before this. So. And uh, he got up and gave a little speech. We was the first two that he called up there <laughs> to give a little a plaque to and talk about. And uh, he, he was talking about me sending him pictures going out to New Mexico and Colorado and I'll send him a picture of me fishing or something or other. And, <laughs> he likes to rub it in. <laughs> and he and he just, he said, and he talking about the big smile I had on my face when I walked in there yesterday. <laughs> um, it's called No More Stress. <laughs> he said, I hope everybody enjoys their retirement like Danny <laughs> is. That's what he said. So I know you have said many mornings that Danny would say, I wish you could just stay home and drink coffee with me. So. Woo, yeah. So, yeah, Miss Lori gets to do that now. And she can cook my breakfast now. <laughs> you can cook me breakfast. I've been cooking my you own breakfast for a long do. time. <laughs> he does make good gravy, y'all. I've been doing that for several years. But I do it at work. I get in off the bus route, and I'd run in. I had a little kitchen in there, the kitchenette. I fixed my breakfast for many, many years. So, 
Our adventure is going to start this summer, and we're going to be doing some camping. Uh, we got us a used little camper, and um, we both love the water. We love the river, and we love the lakes. And I don't, you know, I just like to go and just sit there. I just we get to visit. We get to visit people, and we we actually run across people that know our YouTube channel. Yeah, but uh, and, uh, fam so we'll have some family with us, and I just grandkids don't get grandkids. No. <laughs> of course not. And then next weekend we'll be going to see my my middle granddaughter. She's got a recital, so we get to go see that. And going not, up Springfield, and not, Missouri, and not have to worry that I have to come home and go to work. You know how much fun is that going to be? If we want to take off during the week when everybody's not out being crazy, and go do something or go camping or travel, you know I don't have to worry about it now. Nope. You don't have to watch that alarm clock. If I want to get up on a Monday and make a video for y'all, I don't I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to stress that. I don't have to go to work and come in and make I videos. I mean, thinking, oh my goodness, okay, I've got to go to work and maybe I can get home in between supper and washing clothes and doing the garden. You know, maybe I can get something in there. It's not going to be that way no more. But my biggest thing is with us traveling this summer, um, and meeting a few people and, and visiting family. We want to take y'all with us because we're not just gonna run somewhere. We're gonna be discovering new places and new things because I never in all my life got to do anything like that. And it's funny when you're raising kids and it's uh, what? Oh, I thought you was pointing at something. <laughs> When you're raising kids and your days are so long and you go to bed so tired, you think, you know, I'm never ever going to get to do anything ever. <laughs> That's not true. Your times are coming. But your most important time of your life was spent with them children and, and, uh, tr and trying to do the best you can to raise them to be good, respectful, honest, hardworking, Christian um, adults. And... If, you know, so after you've done that and, you know, it just seems like now's your time. Now's our time. It is. Now it's, it's me and him. And that's the way we started, me and him. Yeah, boy, it's been a long time ago. <laughs> so now we're right back there, me and him. We was married uh, October 24th, 1980. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's something that I'm going to have to get used to. When Danny retired. She got mad at me. No, I didn't. <laughs> I, it took him, and you, can, you know this, it took you a little while to get used to the fact. Oh, it's hard. It was hard on him, and I could tell. And I have a feeling it's not going to be that hard on me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think getting out of my routine is going to take me just a little while. To get used to you know how many times I was asked to stay <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, he said know. he said you sure he said I can tear that piece of paper up he said you don't want to stay you know <laughs> he didn't ask me that and, th and then he still and he still to this day wants me to come back and drive a bus <laughs> but I told him here a while back I said I might have to go back to work driving a bus so I can play more <laughs> yeah he's <laughs> He don't like having that extra bus check, not having uh, no, I, I, toy money. My, little, my, my, my fishing and hunting money. <laughs> but uh, we're my, we're doing good, so we we're don't have fine. any complaints at all. No. So, yeah, this is just, like I said, we both have worked, like a lot of y'all have worked so many years for so, it just seems like. I don't know. It's bittersweet that it's finally here. There's a lady that's glad to hear that we're fixing the possibility to go to uh, go east a little ways, huh? Yeah, probably a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and it's going to be really nice for me when somebody in my family needs me. I don't have to, you know, worry that I've got to call in and say, well, I've got to take the, you know, worried to death about it. 
Yep. When family, I know that I need <clears throat> that I know that I need to take care of my family, that comes first. Our and family I in Texas has done. <laughs> y'all hear y'all when y'all coming? <laughs> Miss Vicky out in uh, Nevada. She's when y'all coming? And I've got grandkids that uh, live about two and a half hours away from us, and I don't get to see them very much. So. So we got a little recital. She's a little bitty girl. We got a little recital to go to. So if Mama's, you know, needing help or something, I don't have to her say, daddy, I'm sorry, I have to work. Her daddy's down in Houston working where that bad storm come through Houston. He's down there helping people get their power back off. Yes, and um, well, I tell you, these storms have been something else here lately. The one in Houston and then the one just recently, what was it, day before yesterday? Iowa. In Iowa, and some people lost their lives. I mean, that's a whole Nebraska, Kansas, town. Oklahoma, they've all been, everybody's had problems at times. So, so sorry about We've that. We've been lucky right here. We have we really haven't had all that much rain. Like we, uh, I had to run down toward Little Rock today, and uh, down there around Cabot, it flooded there this morning about 7 o'clock. It flooded down there today. And we didn't get hardly a, tenth of an inch here I don't think but it just kind of I know it rained hard at school but it goes south of us and it goes north of us it just ain't coming through here but we had a little bit of wind yesterday and a little bit of rain but we we've been lucky we haven't had no real bad storm real bad not right here so what is retirement going to bring us it's going to bring me to be able to do um 20 videos a week. <laughs> no, don't tell him that. <laughs> but it is going to be easier for me and him to do more content and and to bring y'all along on our everyday life because that's the way we want our videos. We want them real. I'll probably be in them more. Uh, we want them real, and we just want them to be to where y'all just want to come visit. And um, we're going to... We got so many people there wanting us to go back to cooking together, and see, we'll be able to do that now because I'm going to be here. He's going to be here, and uh, we're going to be, you know, cooking outside and stuff here. I don't here know for on... how long. It's getting it's pretty hot out here this afternoon. <laughs> Our garden, um, I mean, it's okay. The okra has come up really good. My green beans didn't come up. We're fixing to have to replant the green beans, and we don't know what happened there. We got four or five of them come up. We're gonna um, replant. His potatoes are blooming. Are blooming. Uh, they're not going to be as good this year. I can tell you, they're not going to be as good. But they're they're pretty, but they're not going to be as good as they was last year. I can now tell you I'm I'm going to tell them the difference. That and it may have something to do with it. I don't know, but in the past when we bought seed potatoes. We bought them from the, usually for a long time from the Mennonite store. He would buy them in bulk, and it was usually uh, russets and uh, just Pontiac red red potatoes. Um, this time, uh, he didn't have them. Well, he had been sick, and he had broke his ankle or something right. again, so he wasn't able to go get everything that he usually carries. Um, if he did eventually get them, we missed out on them. So what we did is we went to. Um, was it the tractor supply store? I don't remember. And we just bought, y'all see them at uh, Tractor Supply or something. They're in the little white bags and they're seed potatoes. And they're always more expensive than the way that we buy them. But uh, we knew if we didn't go ahead and get some that there won't be any. I had to get them planted. And we had to get them planted. So we ended up buying the Yukon Go and the Pontiac or were they Russet? Russet, I think. They're okay. both white potatoes. Okay. And these are not come, doing as good as the ones that we... They didn't come up quite as good. But, I mean, we're going to have some potatoes, but they're not They're pretty. As good. I mean, they're up and blooming, but And they, they may fool us. I don't know. Well, and then we went through a dry spell. Mm -hmm. A pretty few weeks of no rain at all. and My sweet potatoes are vining and really growing good now. Well, they're dark green out there. I've seen them. Well, I put some fish emulsion on them the other day. I really soaked them good. So, uh, but um, I got some little squash. Um, my cabbage is starting. You got any tomatoes blooming yet? I don't think so. Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. um, of course, we've been eating stuff like uh, lettuce and, lettuce and, and uh, my broccoli. You broccoli, yeah. That, that broccoli, mm, she done and throwed I, some pretty broccoli. Yeah. So, 
we're not going to plant a huge garden this year because we plan on doing some traveling and there won't, you know, so we're only going to plant what we know we can take care of. Now, the one thing I do want to do is once you dig them potatoes up, I think we need to plant some peas as a crop cover and um, put us some peas up and it'll be good to put nitrogen in that ground too. But anyways, that's our plans is we're going to start out camping at the river and uh, going to the lake. I mean, we She's are... She's done got three trips We're up. booked up. We're one, booked one up. One a month for some, right now. <laughs> we're probably going to have three or four, but she's got... Oh, and I'm looking so forward to it. I really am. And it's so neat because we're going to be doing it during the week. I've never got to do anything during the week. Yeah. Always at work. Always at work. And um, so this is a new adventure for us. And as time goes on, we're going to be going west. Go west, young man. We'll be going west. And um, we, we might get to see somebody we know, huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, no telling where we'll end up. But this video is already about 40 minutes long. My more. goodness. <laughs> but. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? I just, nothing. <laughs> We just need to get on here and tell them we're rad at this point and how excited we oh, are. And and thank you all very much for viewing and watching and subscribing. Well, of course. We wouldn't be here without that. I mean, we wouldn't be here, period, without y'all. We wouldn't? No. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't for... for we feel like for our that, friends uh, and subscribers. I don't like just calling them subscribers. No, I, they're more like family. They're family and friends, and y'all that are new to our channel, you understand you're here with us long enough. You're, we're family, and uh, we have got this wonderful community that, of such good people. That, good people, loving people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all try to take care of each other. I've we noticed, get a rotten peanut every once in a while. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I notice on a lot of, uh, videos, comments that some of y'all even help each other. Y'all even, if y'all see somebody that's, that's hurting or having a hard time, y'all will go to them yourself and you'll tell them that you will be praying for them and, and give them encouragement. And I think that's wonderful. Sure enough. That y'all, this community... It's, it's, you're not just here to, to just watch a video. You're here as a community, as a family, and we're all here to take care of each other because I'm telling a you. A big family. The way this big world family. is, I mean, we if we got to have people that we can as say, that was depend was, on. Huh? you got to have each other's back, don't you? Yeah, you do. <laughs> so we want you all to know that we appreciate every one of you all. Everybody. We love all of you. And y'all send us gifts and uh, cards and letters and uh, nice e comments and emails that sometimes bring us to tears and cards that bring us to tears and y'all send me the old cookbooks that y'all know I love and we got some snacks from the Philippines and stuff <laughs> from the UK and it's just it's really something don't never underestimate the power of caring about people no no because there's so many good people out there you never know what somebody's going through until mm -hmm. so love is the best way to go mm -hmm. it uh we're all fighting some kind of battle it don't matter what it pertains to um i fight sometimes a battle of um, not not really um, I, sometimes I think it's just a hormonal something but sometimes and a lot of women and men both you know you go through a little bit of depression some days you're like why am I feeling this way and you try your best to do whatever you can and you know we're all gonna go through trials and tribulations that's for sure and we have a country that's going through trials and tribulations. Yes. And, uh, but we put our faith in the good Lord, and we try not to worry about it too much. It's sad, some things that go on, and the founding of this country and everything, it's sad. But, uh, but we had to we're going to keep our heads up and keep on going and be looking to that 
heaven, that skyward heaven, that's what we're going to be looking for. That's our home. We're just here for just a short time. Here but a, for a while. A back of vapor and we're gone. But. And you know what? It, now that we're looking back, time has went by pretty fast. It? Yes, it has. <laughs> uh, but we wanted to get on here and just share our joy of this retirement. Uh, there's no place that we would rather be than sitting right here on this homestead, right here in this holler, on the edge of this holler on this hill. This is where we love to be. But that being said, Miss um, Lori's not really got to see. We got somebody coming up from Texas to see us too, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, she is. She's coming up. She knows who she is. <laughs> You know who you are, Well, girl. she's traveling through. <laughs> yeah, she's going to see uh, a grand, uh, grandson she hasn't got to see in a while. So. And uh, that lady over there, what's that, what's that big state over there? Kentucky. Kentucky? <laughs> Georgia? Oh, that lady down there, wait, she lives down there. It's too hot down there. <laughs> yeah, she told me. She's ready to come here. She thinks it's going to be better here, but I'm telling yeah, you. It probably is better than it. Ooh. I'm telling you, down there where she lives, you can cut that humidity with a knife. Well, there's some days you can do it here, too. Well, I was sweating pretty bad a while ago just trying to fix a chicken roost. Speaking of chicken, we're fixing that rattle them things up. Oh, yeah, we got to get the chickens up. <laughs> we got to go try to herd them in like a bunch of sheep, and it probably ain't going to go very good. <laughs> no, it's not. They're young, and they don't, they don't, they're rotten. Uh, they probably ain't, they ain't gonna know where to go. So well, right now they're probably wondering how come they can't get back in their little coop. Yeah, it's getting light. We well, I'm gonna have to go tend to them. <laughs> you can see how light is getting, because um, the lighting's changed. But anyways, we I know we took up y'all's time too much, but uh, we want to just we're just jabbering. We want to just share how happy we are about this new journey. And so, and we're so glad that you get to go with us. Yes, y'all are going to share this journey with us, and and I think that's exciting. <laughs> so it's going to be real exciting. I've been y'all. I've been all over the United States, but I, I haven't got off the beaten path very much, and I didn't even get to talk about my trip out west. Then go we done, ahead. We didn't burn too much time. <laughs> it's too long. I'll have to do it some other time. You can do it. I'll let I'll let you have the camera to yourself. And you can talk to them about your trip out west. I want to talk about some of the so people. So if y'all if y'all want to hear his his trip, y'all leave in the comments that y'all want to hear it, and he can have the stage. I'll let him do it. I've got I got some stories. And now. he's got some pictures too to share with I've you. I've got some pictures and and. Uh, and we got the lady asking, "What was the name of them mountains? Did you tell her she? I forget what they was out there. Anyway, I was about a hundred miles of them. I don't mountains. remember. I'll slip a, a certain time. one that she was talking about, Twin Peaks, or I don't remember what they're called. Twin Peaks. <laughs> that was a movie. That was a series. <laughs> uh, oh, was it? Well, it was three. It was something like that. Yeah, I don't remember, Danny. But anyways, that'll be your video. You can talk about it. I can do another video. And somebody's wanting you to cook some of that pheasant for them, too. Oh, I got to cook pheasant, don't I? <laughs> so anyways, we're going to get off here and get them chickens put up. There's no telling where they're at right now. We'll probably be running around take chickens. <laughs> we'll be running around like chickens with their heads cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we wanted to share our joy with you about our retirement. and. Um, Good Lord willing, we're going to hopefully be around a while. Yeah. So things will be a change in a little bit. And um, we'll be able to get on here and be with y'all a little bit more, hopefully. So At least a little bit easier, huh? Mm -hmm. So I want y'all to have a wonderful weekend. This is Memorial Day weekend. Y'all be careful. And don't forget to respect the people that give us this right. <laughs> yes. This Memorial Day weekend, let's remember. Let's remember all those that give their life and their, their uh, families have lost. Let's... It's not just a holiday. It's let's remember all these people that that made it where we can be free. Amen. We love y'all, and we're gonna see y'all in a couple of days. <laughs> it might absolutely. Be, it might be three or four, but anyways, maybe not. But God bless everybody. Now I guess the next video may be about 
camping, huh? We might get something in between there. In between there? Yeah. Okay. Bye, y'all. We got to get chickens. Though. Love everybody. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Chickens are hollering. <laughs>